Neon Wizard changed the industry in the 1990s by revolutionizing the design and production of neon patterns. Neon shops reduced their costs and streamlined their production processes, leading to increased profits. Neon Wizard became an industry standard tool worldwide. As one customer told me recently, you can't be in the neon business without Neon Wizard. Today, the death of neon has been greatly exaggerated. Neon has not only survived, but it is undergoing a revival. Neon Wizard is 22 years old and still widely used in the industry, although one important shift has taken place. Even though many electrical shops have decided not to continue bending glass, it doesn't mean that they can't stay in the neon business. All they need is a Neon Wizard layout and a wholesale neon shop. Some of our longtime Neon Wizard customers, shops who have kept bending glass, have told me that business has never been better and they will accept your Neon Wizard files. So with that as an introduction, let's take a look at Neon Wizard Pro 6.5. In this video, we'll go through the various options for creating neon lettering and graphics. We'll talk about options for editing and fine-tuning the pattern, and then we'll cover plotting and exporting the finished pattern. Okay, so this is what the Neon Wizard screen looks like when you first launch the software. And the first thing that we'll do is enter some text. So I'm going to use this font condensed block and type in the text Neon Wizard. I'll go ahead and do this, just space these letters out a little bit more. So the first option that I'll show you is how to do um, a uh, channel letter layout, an exposed neon layout, where we have um, two tubes. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, set the clearance, which is the distance from the tube to the return, uh, at uh, one inch. And go ahead and show a preview of what that looks like. So uh, very quickly, the software lays out the tubes, and it breaks all the tubes right here in the middle. We could also add a raceway guideline at a different spot. And if I want to adjust the clearance value, I can just change that and click on preview again. So we're basically in um, a preview mode here until um, I click on done. And I think I might just do it right here in the middle, just like that, so I would say done. So now I have my tubes and I have over here my table of uh, tube lengths and with each letter, so I have 132 feet total um, of neon for this lettering. Now also I have the original outline of each letter, and so that's just regular vector data that can be sent to a router, it can be uh, vinyl cut, um, and then I have the, uh, the tube itself that can be plotted. So that's the first option, and um, the second way that we can enter text in Neon Wizard is to use a neon font, and so we have um, these single tube neon fonts, including a connecting script font. And so if I just type my text here, turn off the colors so there's no, there's no color with, um, obviously with a single tube font, but all I have to do after I type that in is just go here to the, to the neon tool and it just directly converts all these paths into neon. Turn the colors back on. So, um, so it's very easy, and of course, um, this can be scaled. So one of the great things about Neon Wizard, it's very easy to, uh, to scale text. So I started at 36. Um, I could just type in, bring this down to, uh, to 24. And I can also change the, uh, the size of the glass just as easily. I can just uh, select that and change it. So um, very easy to do um, single tube neon text. Now another option, which is um, very easy to do as well, and that is to um, use our tool called Neon Eyes. And Neon Eyes is simply um, a way to um, convert a tube or convert a path directly into a tube. So if I have this neon lettering here in uh, Britannic Bold, I would just go to Neon Eyes and it just converts that straight into, into a neon tube. So you can see here 
it's a flat band around that corner and we'll talk in a few minutes about um, editing of neon tubes but that's basically um, very quick conversion this can be used on uh, lettering any kind of imported graphic or logo um, for exposed neon lettering just convert straight to a neon tube now let's take a look at some very large lettering and I'll go ahead and just uh, move these out of the way. So I'm going to show the parallel uh, neon layout option. And um, I'll just type in the text theater. Let's use uh, maybe Helvetica bold for this. Um, so we have these nice large letters. Space this out a little bit. And I'm going to make these. Uh, 120 inches tall, so 10 foot tall letters. And when we have a layout like this, the parallel tube layout is a great way to do it. So what it does is puts in vertical tubes that are laid out in parallel. And we can set the clearance and the gap. Let's maybe make the gap um, four inches. So um, and we can also go in here and we can adjust the uh, just the exact position um, of these tubes. Let's say we do something like that. And I could do that on uh, each letter as well across the layout. Uh, and of course I can set the size of the, of the neon tubes. So let's do 12 millimeter. And I just click on this button and it gives me a preview. So this is basically what it looks like. It's sort of a uh, marquee style layout and just does all the tubes um, in parallel. So that is um, um, you know, an easy way to keep all the tubes straight to do something very large like that. Now another option is, I'm just going to undo and uh, go back to the original text. So let's say now that I want to, instead of filling in the letters, I want to do, uh, again, sort of a marquee style, and I'll put a, um, a large box around this. So let's say that Instead of filling in the letters, I want to fill in around the outside. So I would just take this box and the letter, and I'm going to do the function called combine. And now when I do the parallel tube layout, it's actually going to fill in um, outside of the letters, and it's not going to fill in on the inside. So just to give a quick preview of what this looks like. So this would be uh, the kind of layout that we can do. And again, I think you would space these tubes out a little bit further, but um, that's the kind of layout we can do. And, um, you know, of course the letters could be um, filled in with um, a different color tube or could be neonized or whatever you want to do. So, um, you know, large layouts, uh, parallel tube layouts are, are um, easy to do in Neo Wizard actually. So that's an a overview of some of the different options for text. And now, next, we'll take a look at um, editing the neon tubes. Okay, so we'll go ahead and make a new layout. And I'll retype in just some text, neon. And I want to go ahead and make a double tube exposed neon uh, layout here. Um, but first, I want to bring in a raceway guideline. and. Um, so we're going to put that, let's say, um, down here. And now when I make the layout, I'll use Auto Tube Layout, and I'll just use the same settings that I did before. Um, so now you see that these tubes are broken down here um, at the Raceway Guideline. Uh, very simple. So let's say that um, I'm going to click on Done for that. And let's just focus here on the end. And I want to show you how we can um, edit and fine-tune um, the tube. So when I click on this tool, uh, basically it lets me see the nodes and, uh, and edit the nodes, which edits the position of the tubes. Um, so the tube is just made up of, um, of arcs and lines, and um, when I double-click on a point, then I get a menu. And there are several options um, here in this menu. So um, the first thing that I want to show you is what we call um, Special Bend. So 
this right here is a, is a flat bend and then this one because I changed it um, would be shown as a, as a drop bend. And this is basically a toggle. So this is based on the angle as to whether it shows it as a, um, a flat bend or a drop bend. Everything here looks like that it's, um, it's a flat bend, but you can go ahead and toggle that back and forth. The next thing that you can do is you can add a tube support. And so a tube support is just drawn like this. So wherever you want to do that, you just double click and add the tube support. So I'll just do it just here on the top and the bottom. And further, I can move the opening, although I don't really want to do that in this case because I have the raceway guideline. But let's say that I wanted to move it uh, perhaps to here, and I say move opening. And what it does is it closes the other opening and it opens it up here. So I would just come back a little bit right there off of my raceway guideline. And what else can I do? So I can black out a tube. And in this case, it's of course not what I would do, but just to, to show how that works, I would just select the tube and then click on black out. So, um, and I'll show you what that looks like when we plot. So that's another option. Um, I can insert points. Um, I can convert uh, between arcs and lines, um, and I can break a loop open, or I can delete a point. Um, so those are all things that I can uh, that I can do. Um, additionally, here at my terminations, um, I can add a double back, and I can also do this automatically um, when I initially do the layout. I can add a double back at, um, at every termination, but. We have this set at three inches, so it automatically um, will go three inches and it defaults um, directly back on the path. And then furthermore, I can add uh, a housing, and we have the option of several different housing options, um, as well as you can make your own housings um, to customize. But I'll just do a PK housing, and it just draws it like that. And again, there, there is an option to um, add housings uh, across the whole layout in one step, uh, as well as double backs. So that is a little bit more, a uh, little bit more automated. But you know, these are some of the options that you can do to fine tune the layout. And um, in the next step, I'll show you how to plot and export the final pattern. Now the final step again will be to plot or export this file and so I went ahead and cleaned up uh, the rest of this and put on my uh, tube supports and housings and blackouts and everything so this would be the final pattern so if I wanted to plot this I would just click on our plot icon and this brings up our plot manager and here on the plot manager um, you can see that um, it reverses the layout automatically when it comes in and this is what the patterns look like and I can turn the colors off to take a better look at this and so you can see how everything is drawn the blacked out tubes and the tube supports and, um, so you would just select your cutter from the list your plotter from the list um, set up your port and go ahead and plot the layout now the other option of course is to export the file so I can do export and um, so here you can select the layers that you want to export and so this can include or not include housings, uh, blackouts, um, two supports and this kind of thing. So you do have different options as far as, um, as, far as exporting. So um, here's the DXF format. Of course we can also export in other vector formats such as uh, AI, EPS, DXF. Those are the the main three. So when I export, it'll create that DXF file and just to take a look at again what that looks like. I'm going to go ahead and uh, import this and that's what it looks like right there. So this is the, um, the DXF version and so it's an exact match to the original layout. Okay so that's a basic overview of Neon Wizard Pro 6.5 from doing various kinds of lettering as well as uh, some, some different tube editing and plotting and exporting. So thanks very much for watching and take care.